Good morning, good afternoon everybody. My name is Ben Follett. I am uh, the U.S. Product and Marketing Manager for SIA. Uh, and today uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the new C Engineer 17 release, um, some of the highlights and uh, some of the reasons why we decided to do uh, a lot of the things that we decided to do in this release. One thing uh, just on housekeeping, uh, if you're having any audio issues or if you have any questions, um, please use the questions panel. Uh, we'll have some of our uh, product engineers answering some questions that you asked throughout the, the webinar. Otherwise, we'll have a time for questions at the end. And again, you can type those questions into the questions panel and, and we'll try to answer some of those live. So we'll go, let's go ahead and get started. So we really had a... a a three-pronged motivation for C Engineer 17, uh, all under the umbrella of really boosting your pro productivity. And so we did this kind of in three uh, different stages, uh, from the usability, so really trying to improve the usability of the software, trying to improve the workflow and really speed that up, and also trying to improve the internal technology of the software. And so uh, for the usability, we really focused on our users. You know, our customers are really what drive the product, um, and their feedback is, is really important to us. And so we utilized uh, a survey, and, and, and from that survey, we're able to implement uh, some different usability improvements, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail later. As far as the uh, workflow, we really wanted to improve the overall speed of the workflow, whether it was through... Um, just analysis things with modeling, loading, running the analysis, different ways to do that, uh, or it was in the BIM process adding both more flexibility and uh, more functionality of the BIM process on the front end and the back end, really trying to allow the users to be as integrated with uh, the BIM process as possible. And then finally, we really wanted to deliver new internal technology. So the ability to really, uh, we've been working on this for quite a while, uh, the ability to run without legacy code, so really upgrading the whole software to um, this kind of new structure of code. Um, so this is the first version uh, for this uh, kind of concept edition level. Really, all this new functionality is available for that concept edition. Uh, we have a brand new post-processing environment in version 17. Um, and we also have uh, multiprocessing for every Eurocode check. And so let's dive a little bit more into the idea of this internal technology. And so what we did is really uh, through things like the new solver link, um, through this uh, kind of getting rid of data conversion, through the multiprocessing in the Eurocode design, and then through the optimization of, of things into the engineering report like pictures, we were able to increase speed. And so we, we found a different various things through different testing, two to four times faster um, performance in the software. We also have better memory management, so more direct internal data transfer, so not so much where we're pulling data from one place and then having to kind of put it through this um, channel. We were able to really pull and access all features and all functionality of the software. Also within the engineering report, better memory management, so we have better performance for items and pictures. And then also, really, all of this is done so that we can future-proof our software. So really, it's much easier for us to maintain, much faster for us to develop. So it's easier for us to um, use this functionality to uh, get to where we want to go and get to where our customers need us to go um, much more efficiently. And so really, this uh, we mentioned this because all of these things are now this kind of full workflow for uh, the, co the concept edition. Many of you utilize the concept edition. Um, and so now we have all of this kind of new stuff, all of this optimization from modeling, loading, um, having the new solver link, and even some functionality within the old solver link, and then all these new code design things and engineering report all available uh, within the concept edition. And obviously this will continue to evolve as we, uh, as we finalize and, and, and get rid of completely our, our, our legacy code and our old solver. So now moving on to the workflow, probably the most important part because it's the largest part. Everything kind of plugs into the workflow, and so there's been a lot of workflow changes and, and improvements um, in the software. So the first we'd like to talk about is the overall concrete workflow in C Engineer. And so we've made a lot of improvements to the different design elements of beams, columns, slabs, uh, crack widths, punching, long-term deflections. All of these have been updated for the Eurocode. And so we have here just a uh, little kind of flow chart. And so the idea here is that you really have a few different uh, provisions, a few different ways to do design, whether you're doing 1D or 2D design, 
um, whether you're doing the reinforcements or the checks and so on and so forth. And so for 1D members, there really are three different ways to uh, design 1D members. We have the first option, which is really just um, pulling out the results, you know, how many bars we need or what the area of steel is. Um, the second is we can actually use the, the CIA section or the concrete section check. Um, and so really dive in a lot more detail into what's going on. And then the third, obviously, is being able to physically add practical reinforcement on the model um, and run the design and, and check those, those values and get this capacity check or the interaction check based on the actual reinforcement that we've added. And so from the kind of basic information in option one, we can go one of two directions. It's really just based on the workflow that you're looking for. So we've also extended the check for... Uh, ultimate limit state and serviceability limit states for the concrete 1D members. Um, you can see that uh, on the diagram there, you can see what's required and what's provided. So you can kind of see that, that diagram, that graph throughout every member to really give you a better idea of how the member is performing and how the reinforcement that you've added is performing alongside of those required reinforcements. Um, obviously, just more detail and more output. And that was really the one thing that I think the majority of the users uh, worldwide we're really looking for as far as concretes goes is just more and better output. You know, how can we see exactly what C engineer is doing? Really trying to eliminate this idea of this black box software. Now moving on to 2D members, um, again, there's a, a myriad of ways to, to do things. In this particular case, we're looking at uh, different design outputs. So whether it's the design of longitudinal reinforcement, shear reinforcement, the calculation of cracks that are going to develop, um, or the new long-term deflection checks, or the new punching shear design and checks, all of these are now available um, in the new interface in C Engineer. And so when we're calculating uh, kind of longitudinal or shear reinforcement, in this case, we can see both the required reinforcement and then also see what we've provided. And so in this case, we've chosen you know, this basic reinforcement that we're providing, um, and we can see uh, okay, we've got this reinforcement around the columns, obviously, maybe the punching shear reinforcement, and then the, re the regular reinforcement on the rest of the slabs. And so we can see this, obviously, graphically, or again, we can see this uh, with the forces and the, the reinforcement provided in the, in the detailed output. Also, when we're looking at checking for uh, the development of cracks in the slabs and the walls, um, we can find out... Um, you know, it's probably best in this case, you know, we can see, you know, visually the crack widths or, or how we, how, where the crack widths would develop, but really being able to see this in a detailed output, I think, and then seeing exactly how the crack is developing in the detail output through the calculation is really important. And so we can see whether or not uh, a section is cracked. Obviously, if a section hasn't cracked, then this check is, is moot. We don't really need to, to worry about this, but if it has check, uh, cracked in the, in the one direction there, we see, yes, it has indeed cracked. You know, what's happening, what's being What's going into this check to say, yes, what is the length of the, the crack? Okay, this is the length of the crack. Does that meet um, you know, our, our requirements, yes or no? And so we can plain as day see that um, in this particular output. We also now have a, more, uh, a much more simplified method to guide reinforcement design in both 1D and 2D members. So uh, new templates, uh, new interfaces to allow you to... Um, add upper and lower reinforcement in 1D members. So really to set these templates for beam reinforcements, you can save these templates and continue to use them in beams, set ones for columns and plate ribs and stuff like that. Same thing goes for 2D members as well. And so we can see the additional uh, you know, basic reinforcement and then additional reinforcement that you would be adding. And so all of this goes to really just allowing you to much more, in a much more simple fashion, um, in a much more clear fashion, um, define what you need to put on your model um, so that that information can be communicated in design and then also into the engineering report when you are uh, documenting the, the, the results for your drawings or, or for your reports. One of the big improvements that users have been asking for for quite some time is the design or, and check for punching shear. And we've had this in the past, but really, again, along the lines of improving workflow, really uh, trying to improve uh, the workflow so that the user has to do less manually. And so what is supported in this particular check? So um, we have a punching check now for the design of, for slabs and foundations. So one of the big things is this automatic recognition for the shape and location. So whether it's an edge column or a corner column or an interior column, whether that column is circular or square, all of those things um, you know, uh, allow you to do less manual input. Um, there are different uh, possibilities for the calculation of that beta factor. 
We have two different types of reinforcement that are supported for checks of flab resistance. Um, also, it's very easy and very plain now to see the presentation of the unity check and the size of the critical uh, parameter at, at which the punching check needs to be done. And then also we can calculate where there's punching reinforcement that's required, we can, we can go ahead and calculate that reinforcement. And so we can really do that whole design and check of uh, what's required for the punching shear um, on slabs and foundations. For codependent deflections, we've also updated this as well. Um, so we have codependent deflections on 1D and 2D members really in a single click. So we have automatic load combinations. We can utilize and, and understand three different types of reinforcement. So there's a clear presentation of also the unity checks. We can kind of see this in the screen over here, the unity checks, kind of like you're familiar with on 1D members with the red or the green, and then a unity check and a gradient um, on the 2D members. It's a step-by-step -step calculation, really, again, wanting to be uh, inclusive and, and wanting to be as far away from this black box nature as possible. And then finally, the automatic calculation of the creep coefficient is really important. Um, and so we can see here we could either user input, which obviously is always, um, if you're checking something or if you are um, really uh, have some data from somewhere else being able to do, but setting that as an auto uh, calculation so that it calculates throughout the slabs and, and 1D members is really important. Now, one of the other things is that uh, we've also, because we, we improved a lot of the internal technology and we've improved a lot of the checks alongside of that, we've also improved the overall speed of design when we're using concrete. And so in this particular example, uh, you can see we have uh, 576 2D members, 648 1D members, uh, 216 different surface loads, and then we're looking at load combinations for, uni uh, for limit uh, stre strength and, and uh, serviceability as well. And so um, we can see here the, the difference in versions uh, for the reinforcement design for 2D members and, and for 1D members compared for 17 and then previous versions. And so we can see here that we're at minimum 1.5 times faster. And then for 1D design, we're, we're just much faster. Um, so we're 3.75 times faster. And so really, this ability to do this more efficiently, not just present you better results, but also prevent, present you better results faster. Um, ultimately is what you need to do so that you're not spending as much time just waiting for the software to, to respond. Now in addition to improvements in concrete, we also had a, a bunch of improvements in steel. And so the first is uh, this classification tool and the effective section extensions. And so really this flexibility to um, calculate for any section, the center line and the initial shape. So not just for um, CFS or, or cold form shapes, um, but for any section shape, including these haunch or tapered members. And so you can see here just a, a group, uh, just kind of a, a list of, of different members, different member types. Um, some of these are um, standard that you would find in SIA, some of these, um, you know, double shapes like the double angles or the channels or uh, the, the, the eye shape with the, the channel on top. Others are just, uh, you know, pre-made shapes, you know, shapes that you're just use, you know, creating on your own. And so any of these can be, you can, we can calculate this for classification and effective section properties. So really what this allows us to do is, is get more economical in design. And so we have uh, better accuracy. We're no longer dumping every section um, or a majority of the sections to that class three in the Euro code. And so really this is based on, um, you know, that, that combination key. And so we can see here now in, in, in here, we can see the different nodes for the classifications that we're providing. And so we can see the limits and then see, you know, really what part of the section is now a part of which class, right? And so we can see here the different section IDs. So we're looking at sections four, five, and seven, four, five, and seven. Okay, here are the limits. What class does that fall into? So we're not just, we're not kind of um, penalizing a section for being uh, a certain way. And so really, what does this classification tool give you? So in the end, it's integrated into the steel check, and the calculation occurs in the background, so you don't need to activate it, you don't need to turn it on. Um, there is a standalone classification tool, and so really, this is mainly intended for if you want more insight into the calculation, you want to go a little bit deeper. Uh, if you want to compare that to maybe some hand calculation that you've done, um, or you've pre-selected a specific cross-section, and you really want to look at, or you want to you know, get more information about that particular cross-section. It's also incredibly flexible, so we can classify uh, roughly 99% of all sections that are used in practice. So certainly they're always, um, in, you know, really 
out there shapes, and but um, most of the shapes we're finding are, are being able to be classified throughout the classification tool. And then finally, you know, because we're trying to achieve a more economical design, you know, we are uh, we work with the actual internal forces for this section, um, and so the calculation really allows it to be more accurate, allows it to be faster um, because it's integrated into the steel check. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about doing this or um, trying to do this manually for complex cross sections. You really can just, you know, worry about it in the background. But if you really want to, you can dive into it and check more uh, within the standalone classification tool. One of the other things that we implemented, again, for us to just allow to, for a better workflow, but also for a more economical workflow within steel design, is our semi-compact sections. And so we utilized um, uh, some different publications. So the publication, Plastic Member Capacity of Semi-Compact Steel Sections, a more economical design. Um, this was funded by the European Research Fund for Coal and Steel. Um, it's already a part of the Eurocodes, and so we wanted to include this into the software. And so let's see how, that was, how, that, how that's been implemented. And so really, in this particular case, um, we've, the first important uh, use of this Semi-Compact Plus is that it's limited uh, or it, that is, it's a limited plastic strength can be used for semi-compact se sections. And so that certainly first has to be taken into account. The second part is if a section is um, almost in class two, then, then the capacity will also be comparable to sections of class two. And so when the section is very thin, maybe almost in a class four, the plastic part of the capacity will be almost negligible. And so we have also these kind of corrected limits between the classes, so there's no discrepancy between uh, the different parts of the Euro code. And so this applies to hot rolled sections, uh, rectangular tubes, welded boxes, all these kind of sections that you see here, uh, see here drawn. And so all of these sections can be part of this kind of semi-compact set. And so let's look at what this does in practice, right? And so this was actually uh, one of the user contest projects from 2014. We've modified it slightly to um, just obviously kind of build this up and, and show you what can be done with this. And so we've got this industrial steel hull, um, 1,700 nodes, 2,300 beams, uh, a d bunch of different profiles and load cases, and then uh, a few different combinations and envelopes. And so um, if we look, this um, is without using semi-compact. And so if we look at the results, we have a few overstresses, uh, not too many, not too drastic, um, but certainly a few. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to replace some of the sections with thinner sections because we want to see how the semi-compact uh, influence the resistance of, some, of certain sections in class three. And so uh, we've applied some of those rules um, with replacing those sections. And then we can see here that you know, we get this, we get a different design. We can also see that there are some of these sections that aren't quite as utilized, right? The unity check, that green, it's kind of hard to tell between the two uh, graphics, but the, the unity check is not nearly as high. But really the question is, okay, we see we got rid of maybe some of those red overstresses, but really how do we quantify how much we save? Um, so let's take a look at that. And so when we look at um, how the semi-compact sections influence, are influenced by this, we can see here um, with the old sections, a total mass, a total service area, a total volume, and then with the new sections and see that difference. So really in the low 20s uh, percent difference as far as um, you know, what we've done, uh, we've added a little bit more surface area but less mass and less volume. And so if we look at the sections here, you know, we have previous sections and then we've updated those sections um, and got you know, and we have much less mass in that case. And so because of that, you know, we have, we're, we're saving steel, right? And so not only, um, not only are we saving steel, but again, we're also, uh, we're also saving time. And so all of this, again, is rolled into, just like in concrete, is rolled into, um, you know, performance. And so in version 17, we support parallel multi-core computation. So using all of your cores um, for analysis and design. Uh, so this means that several elements are done at the same time. The software has a more, we feel, is, is much more stable than it has been in the past. Um, and so in some cases, in, in previous versions, you had to wait, you know, you know maybe 20 minutes, um, you know, for a design of a full structure like this, whereas in, in version 17, you know, we're finding that this industrial building, you know, is, is 
uh, for, an, for an elastic stress method is, is much faster. So we're getting somewhere in the, in the three minute range, three and a half minute range. And even when we're doing uh, the, uh, a secondary method that yields surface method, we're, we're up five minutes, but still, you know, over four times faster. So this means the steel check really is much more efficient. So you're getting better results and you're also getting them more efficiently. In addition, we have some other uh, results uh, or, or nuances in the steel code check that allow um, for just better uh, reporting. The first is this result legend. Um, and so that hasn't been available before, but it shows you exactly what's um, being shown. And so this is great for pictures so that you, know, you can see exactly what's being done. It can, it, you can uh, minimize it if you don't like what you're seeing. Um, we also uh, can enable different components of the steel check, so you can turn on and off different parts of the check and show different parts of the check visually. We also have just improved display, so we've uh, added extra labels, we have customizable colors and gradients, uh, we've added new fonts and, and better support and better uh, rendering for those fonts, and also just a better rendering engine, so everything is just looks cleaner and also still uh, maintains the performance uh, of the software in general. We've also in included uh, some improvements to the output. And so this is one of the, the biggest things, again, so we kind of get away from that idea of this black box. We don't want just having a table with just some basic data. We want to have as much information as possible. We want you to be able to go into the code provisions and verify exactly what we're doing. And so, um, being able to show all the code provisions, being able to show all the subscripts, being able to show all the Greek symbols, um, all the different tables that are involved. Um, so, and, and really being able to open up uh, these things through a double click really just, you know, really aims to make the workflow much more uh, efficient. And so some just additional productivity features that are available. Um, we now have error warnings and note reporting uh, right in the 3D screen so you can hover over um, you know, a result, and you can see this kind of yellow uh, text box that shows you, okay, here are, here are some of the notes that are available, you know, you know, what's the shear forces, what's the axial force doing, to what code provisions. You can see these in the summary and the detailed outputs as well as in the table results. Um, we have better uh, and more flexible table results. Um, and then also you can, um, and one of my favorite features is being able to see uh, a combination from the critical combination key. So really, if you have an envelope combination before when you would just say that, you know, if it was a ULS combination and it had a bunch of uh, combinations with the, in the envelope, it would report to you that it was ULS1, but you really didn't know what ULS1 actually was unless you exploded it or went into the engineering report. Now you can see right, in, right within your check exactly what ULS1, it's dead plus live or, or dead plus or 0.3 dead plus live, whatever the, the combination is, you can see that right there so that you don't have to explode it, you don't have to do additional work that's already been done in the background in the software. Additional design extensions, um, we've added tubular connections. Uh, so this is kind of the first release of, this tube, uh, of these tube connections. Um, so right now they're circular uh, hollow, core, hollow shaped sections um, and so you can see the ones uh, kind of highlighted here or, or lined out in green are the first that we're supporting. So we've got a recognition of, of the joint type. Also, uh, all 2D joints except for that KT joint. The checks are according to the Euro code. Um, and then we also plan to add a few more. Um, and so there's a few more that, we, that we're looking to add uh, in the 17.1 version, which will be out in, sometime in the fall. Um, for our American users, um, and, and mainly North American users, uh, and even some of the European users, which uh, we've done a, a lot of nice updates to the to the IBC codes. Um, so all of the steel codes uh, have been updated. Uh, so first, obviously, the um, Hot World steel code, the the AISC 36016. Uh, we've made some updates based on the the changes that were made in in that particular code to uh, compression members with slender elements, and then updated flexural torsional buckling for elements. Um, so we can see uh, in the little graph here, we can see some of the changes that were happening um, between 2010 and 2016. So for some shapes, like a WT, change is pretty significant. And so incorporating this um, allows you a better and more flexible design. The same thing happened in uh, the AISI code, so the cold form code, updating that to the most recent version, the 2016 version. Um, so we now support closed box sections. Um, we have a better check for shear members without web stiffeners and just more economical uh, design for distortional buckling. And so again, you can see the graph here. We can see the differences between um, the codes 
in uh, the 2007 code, which is the AISI code that we had previously, um, and what was proposed and what is being implemented into, into version 16. And so uh, just some differences in how things are being calculated. One of, I think, the nicest improvements, and this will come in uh, a release that we're just finishing up with some testing, and a release will actually be out um, next week, uh, is the support for diaphragms. So simplified diaphragms, really something that's uh, essential for large buildings um, when maybe the, the, the slab design is not nearly as important. And so what does this give us? So this gives us uh, rigid diaphragms, so a better formulation for composite floors, uh, so rigid floors and steel buildings, flexible diagrams, or excuse me, flexible diaphragms, better formulation for metal decks uh, on structures. So really giving us uh, simplified load transfer and easy validation. And so we can see this um, in both of these examples here. If we have a flexible diaphragm, you know, this is kind of what we would expect with 30 kips of load on this. With a rigid diaphragm, you know, we've got the, the same 30 kips of load, but the different distribution. And then the deflections, we kind of get these in individualized, localized deflections with a flexible diaphragm, and then everything in a rigid diaphragm is moving together. You also have semi-rigid. You've always had semi-rigid in SIA, but you have semi-rigid diaphragms um, as well. That's just an option. And so these are just drop-down options when, in, with, when you add... Um, decks and, and metal decks. And there's also new metal deck and composite deck input options within 2D members. A lot of these extensions are valuable for composite steel. And so um, we've also done a few improvements here. Um, so the first is automatic stage load combinations. So no longer do you have to um, create the uh, the um, construction combinations for strength and serviceability and then the final stage combinations for strength and serviceability and then put them into a class. Now those all just got, get created automatically. So there's just an option within the composite setup to say, hey, what kind of combinations do you want to create? LRFD, ASD, same thing for the Euro code. What kind of combinations do you want to create? Um, you can always create manual combinations, but that way those get automatically created for you. Um, there's new setup options in both the American code and the Euro code as well. Uh, for the American code, we've uh, you know included some new spacing requirements based on some user feedback. They want to minimize the spacing or change the min-max spacing of studs based on um, the AISC or change them from the AISC. Also, we've uh, added the, the ability to modify your shear connectors, your studs right from the window, and also your reinforcement there right from the, 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 the setup. So a lot better workflow uh, for composites. Finally, we've also added tributary area load distribution, and that was part of that larger project with um, diaphragms. And so just a much better result um, as far as being able to validate not only the lateral load through diaphragms, but being able to validate the gravity load based on the expectations of uh, the American user. And this isn't just for slabs and for composites, but for you know load panels on walls with wind load and as well, you can utilize that tributary area load distribution. So we have some other improvements for steel design. So we've uh, done some small things to improve the warping check um, for thin walled cross sections. So uh, differentiation in methods now. Um, we've also added some flexibility to the stability check for tapered members. Um, and so we've included this designer's guide from EC3 um, to allow us, uh, you know, a better taper member check with stability in mind. We also now have a link to the idea static connection uh, functionality, and so really this has the ability to calculate any type of connection. It's using a finite element method, and so you can kind of see these little graphics here, these little pictures. So obviously this is the the connection that we would have built, um, much more complex than you know we're able to. Uh, you know, do in the standard things and what we have in SIA, but we can see really all the stresses and, and what's going on here. So we have a direct export now from the 3D model into this, um, and we can also store the idea project. So the file now is kind of packed and saved inside of the SIA file, and you can reopen that at any time. And so really a lot of flexibility when you have to do these more detailed or, or more, uh, you know, nuanced connections. Um, you know, with haunches and, and gusset plates and, and base plates, and you want to understand that whole assembly, uh, you can use this, this link. We also have a link to the Westox cell, cellular beam functionality. <clears throat> so we have a direct export from the 3D environment. Um, so we can update the SIA beams after the optimization uh, from that Westox functionality. And um, we have all those support for composite beams. So we have in, you know, utilizing the slab data, combining that with diaphragms, all this information which is necessary 
uh, when using this Westdoc functionality in these cellular beams. Now, in addition uh, to the steel and the concrete flexibility and functionality that was added for the workflow improvements, we also mentioned in that workflow that we have BIM improvements, both on the front end and the back end. And so uh, these BIM improvements fall into the three main levels, uh, BIM Plus, All Plan, and then obviously Revit. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this. And so within BIM Plus, um, BIM Plus now within C Engineer 17, uh, we have directly integrated um, kind of this idea of big BIM collaboration based on the BIM Plus platform. And so you have structural analysis and you need to reference models from architecture, from structural, from MEP. We need to aggregate those all into one model. Really, we need to do that for visualization, for class detection, for rights and roles, for issue tracking, revision management. All of these different things need to happen. And so this is this idea of this big BIM uh, that we would utilize with BIM Plus. And so what is BIM Plus? So BIM Plus is a cloud-based collaboration platform that's handling all aspects of kind of this big BIM workflow. And so um, it's free to use, so you can register, use it for free. Um, their only limit is a, is a size limit on, on the models that you're, you're kind of utilizing. Um, and so you can go to bimplus.net. Um, you have a 2.5 gigabyte limit, um, but you can import um, any CAD BIM model into BIM Plus. You can import any CAD BIM model into, uh, or excuse me, import any C engineer model into this, and then use the BIM Plus interface to do um, to do some collaboration. And so within this, now in C engineer, we can also review, solve, or create issues in, C, in the C engineer environment. So we can assign them to a specific person within the BIM Plus world. We can mark the status, add descriptions, add screenshots, add 3D locations. And so we can do all of this so that that information is better communicated more efficiently to the users who are using this BIM Plus workflow. And so when you create a task, then you can view the task, right? So now we can see the task, okay, who's the author, who's the responsible, when was it done, what's the priority, what's the status. Okay, now if I click on that, we can see, okay, um, you know, we can, uh, if they don't, you know, we can see the BIM Plus information, we can see the screenshot, we can see the description. The question, though, is what happens if the user isn't using BIM Plus? Everybody's not using BIM Plus. And so in this case, what's possible is we can ex include the export to, to BCF. BCF is a BIM collaboration format. And so that's just uh, exporting to, you know, uh, Celebri and Tecla and BIM Collab and Archicad. BCF can create an email, so you can just send an email for coordination. So all of these things are, are possible. So you can get all this data without having to, you know, take screenshots and do different things. All this data can be collaborated whether you're using BIM Plus or not. We also now have a uh, new version of the Revit link. Um, and so we've updated that for support for Revit 2018 and, and, and CIA 2017. Uh, we now have multilingual support, so not just using English language support. We have a smarter algorithm for mapping of materials and steel profiles and then other kind of more um, dimensional cross sections, concrete, timber, precast sections. We've also, based on some user feedback, uh, improved the user interface for mapping, um, have more higher performance for concrete support. We have some improved handling for non-exported objects, what happens when you can't export objects. Also uh, improved handling for rounding errors and then when we're dealing with round tripping. And so let's, let's look at some of these things. And so a better interface for material mapping. So you're not just picking, hey, I want just timber or wood or, or one thing. Now we have a, a much uh, larger library so we can uh, use this. So much more robust. Uh, being able to utilize some of this user interface um, and also utilize, you know, the full uh, depth of what we have in C Engineer. Better mapping for parametric sections. Um, so sending sections to C Engineer. So whether they're graphical sections or numerical sections, we can break these down and say, okay, from C they have a B1, B2, B3, B4, right? And we want to define them the same way in Revit. We can send these sections back and forth between the softwares. Now this is a one-click solution for all plan. And so now we're in all plan. We can actually go ahead and directly export things from all plan to C engineer. And so we've done an all plan export. It's an IFC file export. Uh, it's used in the background, but it has the perfect and correct uh, predefined settings that you need in C engineer. And so now when we import as members, we're not going to use the reference model workflow here. We're just going to actually have those members automatically recognized uh, from all plan to SIA. 
we can go ahead and see uh, you know what we have in the model. So we've built that um, that model directly from that interface. Now the final part of our uh, our kind of mantra, our motivation of boosting your productivity was uh, for usability. And so really um, we did a lot of work on usability um, based on user feedback, based on things that we've kind of discovered and learned on our own uh, from developing. And so the first is this new results service. So we have a new, more efficient uh, results service with which is many more options for how you can control the graphical output. Um, it's enabled through the project data. And so you can see here uh, we have the old and the new still working for both post-processing post -proce post environments. Um, so we've improved the individual types of results. So you have more robust results for individual things like like res like results, like res supports and, and reactions and, in and 1D members. We have the legend with display load cases and combinations, values of units next to every picture. We also have a better update of settings. So new settings for 1D results, visualizing combinations within envelopes better result settings for the 3D screen. All of these things are incorporated into the new results service. And this will continue to be developed um, as we can continue, continue to go forward. So um, the 16 environment gives you all the functionality, all analysis types, results, building standards, everything um, in the previous post-processing environment. Um, the 17 environment, we've released kind of the first part of this. And so we've got all these upgraded visualizations and speed enhancements. And so you have full functionality from the starter and the concept editions, which enable you to perform linear calculations, um, nonlinear calculations, modal analysis, and all those results are available. And so for some of those results, we have just general enhancements to, to functionality. So for instance, we have 3D displacements and 3D stresses on all beams. We've had them for linear elements, but also modal, modal design, or excuse me, modal results and stability analysis as well. So a better visualization of exactly what's going on. Um, better output for nodal displacements, and so you can see here, you know, we've, we can see the structure not just displacing with an arrow or something like that, but actually showing the displacement and then showing the gradient of displacement on the beam. Also, better reaction support, so nodal reactions, individual resultant reactions for members or, or groups of members, uh, better use for envelopes, averaging and trapezoidal distributions, all of these are just general enhancements to the functionality. For 1 and 2D results, um, better visualization of the results, so you have more visualization options, different color schemes um, that you can utilize, you know, how you want the graph to show, if it's filled, is it transparent, you know, how is it being shown. And so this is all available in the, just an expanded property dialog. We've got the legend, as we mentioned, and then also uh, quick access to the combination key. And so you could go ahead um, not only and view the combination, but you could also very easily explode a combination from the combination key to look at that combination very specifically. Um, and that's just with one of the action buttons within the results. So you no longer do you have to go back into the combinations um, interface, explode it, or create your own combination. One of the biggest things that we did um, throughout the time and development for the 17 release was uh, a survey for uh, user chosen usability improvements. And so we took the top 20 requested features collected by uh, the support team, the customer service team, and we allowed people with an active maintenance agreement to vote on those items. And so we promised that we develop the top three items. We actually ended up doing the top four items. We had a little bit more time. And so from that, we ended up developing four different things. So um, improved readability for the text. Um, a direct and single click export from the table input and table results into Excel. The ability to run um, a either single load case or a selection of load cases for analysis rather than just running everything. And then also uh, what we call format painter tool or what's more commonly known in, in AutoCAD as a match properties tool. And so the first, this kind of improved readability in the model. So we tried to um, we try to do, have a more logical uh, workflow and environment, so we're kind of just a slight reorganization of things. Um, we're using uh, hardware multi-sampling, which smooths out the lines, it smooths out the text, so just better readability of these things. Um, and so really this allows us to maintain a higher resolution without affecting performance. And so this is option, this hardware multi-sampling is on by default, um, and so this you don't have to change it, or but if you needed to up, update it or you needed to open it up, you could open eyes the uh, the graphics setup and, and switch this on or off. 
so you can see here the difference between the difference between you know previous results kind of um, edgy a little bit and then the new results being able to just kind of visualize things much better also you can see the difference here between uh, the multi sampling from old, old results to new results uh, one of the nicest improvements is this idea, this ability to export data directly from, to Excel from uh, the table input or table results. So really, um, people are using Excel, um, you know, in, in many ways. But so being able to take this data directly out of table input or table results um, for either additional design or additional um, checks is incredibly valuable. And so really, there's just a export to Excel button. And then from the drop down, you can choose what you want to export. You want to export just the current tab or everything or a certain category or a custom selection. All are possible with that single click. We also have the ability to run a selection of load cases now. So within the new, um, the new window for the analysis or the calculation, um, you see some new options. Really, all those same options exist. You just have a much um, smaller standard set of options so you don't have a, a, a myriad of data that are advanced mesh settings that you never set or advanced solver settings that you never change so really the things that are really important are, are uh, visually available and then you can choose to specify load cases and choose which load cases you want to use so it gives you focus if you need it um, it can reduce your computational time when you just want to look at just the wind or, or just the dead load or something like that we also now have included this format painter, so the match properties tool. So basically the ability to quickly copy formatting from the properties of an object to another object. So you can select a master object, you activate the functionality, there's just a paintbrush tool, it's in the properties of the element right below the filter tool, or the lightning bolt tool like I like to call it. And then you choose the element that you want to select and, and match the properties to. And so the functionality is mainly available for the structure and the load services. Other usability workflow improvements um, for day-to-day -day tasks. Um, so now in the main tree, you have the ability to just do a one-click interface. So just one single click on things, no longer double clicking. Uh, the new calculation window, like I already mentioned. Uh, shortcuts, so keyboard shortcuts. Uh, you can see them down here in the bottom right. So just different shortcuts for running results or refreshing the analysis or refreshing the, the result that you have looking at. Also other minor improvements uh, in modeling, concrete and steel design, the engineering report, etc. And so we've made some nice changes to speed in the engineering report as well. So sending live pictures, um, you know, just with the way we've done this with data transfer and memory storage, we're up to three times faster. Obviously directly importing Excel sheets, um, so being able to use live Excel sheets and then make changes to those Excel sheets and have those external Excel sheets updated. So you can edit the 1D and 2D results also in the drawings, and then we can also have um, independent report template pass. And so let's go ahead, this is just a short video about some of these um, productivity improvements. And so when we turn on the new uh, functionality, we use the new um, uh, post-processing environment, we now have our new results service. And so we can just access things in single click. So I'm just single clicking on things. There's no double clicking here. So when we single click on results, we're brought into the current uh, new results service. And so for this particular case, I'm doing a modal analysis. And so or stability analysis, we have combination results available for both. So I can choose an eigen mode in this case and refresh the results. And so you can see now the result that you're getting uh, for that particular, for this particular bridge, this pedestrian bridge for those modal and out those modal results so much better results and if we just hit F5 we can actually just refresh that so we just use the shortcut there to refresh that result we can also see the legend uh, we can uh, collapse this legend if we don't want to see it anymore we'll go ahead and switch the models here um, and again making sure that we're in that post processing environment that we want now we can see the new interface for the calculation. So what calculations do we have enabled? The basic information for the FE analysis. Now we want to just do, if we want to just do uh, selected results or one specific result, we can, um, or one specific case, we can. Um, otherwise, we can just run the calculation. And then with the calculation finished, we can look at the results. Again, we're in that new post-processing environment. And so we can see 
um, our new environment, we can choose a combination. So we have the results for the different elements in the combination. We can go ahead and look at these expanded values so we can get the name of the value. So we can see, okay, it is axial indeed. We can change the color scheme to a rainbow so we can see this rainbow color scheme. We can change the way that we want things to look, whether they're one color or a single color again. We can also go ahead and see everything since we're looking at everything in a, in a table input. We can go ahead and easily copy a certain uh, combination and then say, you know what, I want to explode or, or break out that combination. So I want that to be in the linear combinations. So yes, I've successfully added it. Now in our combinations, we don't just have the ULS combination or in the SLS, but we also have that generated combination. And so now we can see all the results for just that combination if we want. Finally, in the engineering report, we can go ahead and add in external items like an external fi Excel file. And so when we go ahead and launch the path to Excel, the Excel file, we can open up this Excel file. So this is the Excel file as we have it open. We can click edit. edit editing the Excel file will actually launch Excel. And so we can make changes to this file now. So you know, we'll change the foundation width. We'll change the depth. And then when we're ready, we can just save it and then regenerate the report. And the information in the external Excel file has, has been updated. We can also change maybe how we want to view this. So we don't want to just view the entire file. We want to view a user-defined range of cells. So we'll change that range of cells and change how we want to fit it. So we only see maybe the, the top part of that there. And so giving us a lot more flexibility. One other improvement, uh, we talked a little bit about it, was uh, for load distribution um, is the ability to utilize tributary areas. So no longer just using the standard or the FEM approach, um, but also using tributary areas. So really this distribution of loads on beams based on the geometric kind of configuration of the beams that form that kind of grid spacing. And so whether it's um, kind of a triangular or, or whatever, these are all calculated. And so we can see the tributary areas and how they're calculated on, on individual floors, whether it's one way or two way. So it's easily it's easier to verify what's going on, easy to visualize so we can see exactly what's happening, how the loads are being transferred. We also they reduce the amount of generated loads. So because there's not it's not based on the mesh and it's not changing every mesh element, we're not getting, you know, a ton more loads. We're just getting more uh, li individual line loads. And so just a lot more flexibility. We've also made some improvements to the 3D wind generator for the Eurocode um, and so added the ability to um, utilize parapets and, and freestanding walls within the 3D wind generator, also protruding roofs or overhangs uh, within the 3D wind generator. So using those provisions from uh, the EC 1991 um, to include in our uh, 3D wind load generator to really just make it more robust and, and to handle more cases. Finally, we've also um, done a lot of localization. So we've added new national annexes for Cyprus, Denmark, Italy, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. Um, we've also done some code updates for the Czech national annexes. And then also added some, uh, diff some new things for the material libraries for uh, British concrete, Australia, uh, Austrian reinforcements, uh, Irish concrete, and German concrete as well. So improvements just across the board uh, so that we uh, are still the leader in supporting national annexes in Eurocode. So just to recap, um, really we, we really restructured everything in C Engineer to really focus on improving and boosting your productivity through usability improvements, through workflow improvements, and through uh, improvements to, uh, to internal technology. And so if you want to learn more about the new release, um, please visit uh, resources.cia.net. You could also visit cia.net and, and find more information about uh, release 17. Um, but at this time, we can go ahead and if there are questions that you'd like to ask, um, I know that some people have been answering them, but we can go ahead and answer some more questions at this time if you'd like to type them into the chat window. Okay. Well, we can, um, we'll certainly make sure that we answer all the questions. Um, but at this time, I think we're going to go ahead and end the uh, webinar. And so if you have uh, more questions, um, certainly you can uh, email uh, us directly 
Uh, my email is um, just my full name, b.follett at sia.net. Um, obviously, you can email whatever salesperson or support person that um, you're familiar with working by. We'll also try to um, answer the questions that we didn't uh, get a chance to answer um, and uh, communicate those answers to you um, uh, at a later date. Uh, I thank you for your participation. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. And otherwise, uh, have a great day, and uh, we'll see you next time.